uh, we will be recording this. I will be recording this meeting and then posting it for later viewing. Um, welcome. Again, my name is Sulin Jones. I'm the LSTA coordinator here at the State Library, and I'm also the project manager for statewide databases. So let's move on. All right, here is our agenda for today. Um, I know my email, I promised all sorts of great things, everything you've always wanted to know about databases. Um, I may have been um, a little optimistic about what we could cover, but um, we're going to talk about the history, why we have statewide databases, because not all states do. Um, the current titles and the target audiences for those titles and um, the, new, the new and improved statewide databases LibGuide for library staff. Um, I'm going to talk about the RFP process, how we actually select these. So um, if you're wondering why we have these databases and not something else, this will give you an insight into that. And um, I'm also going to tell you about the contract expiration dates and what's coming up for the next round of um, database purchases. User interfaces. Um, these may be things that you know, but um, I talked to some of our vendors and I learned things about interfaces and individual links versus bundles. So I'm just going to share those with you. Um, usage, uh, usage statistics, <clears throat> talk about that. Then help and training, tech support. And um, I'm going to finish with a survey. Um, we do surveys here whenever we do instructional programs for library staff just to see if um, you know what we're telling you is, is something you need and um, okay so what's not on the agenda just in case you're here for that we are not going to do any database demos at all I'm not going to go into world book and show you how to use it um, that's not my wheelhouse that's not my strength we have vendor training tons and tons of vendor training just to do that and so that's, you know, a couple line items up, help training. That's where you can go and um, learn how to actually use them if you need that. <clears throat> Any questions or comments so far? Um, I, I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself. If anyone wants to try it. Oh, yep, I see someone did. So great. If you want to talk, just unmute yourself um, or type in the chat. Okay. So moving on, <clears throat> our first, excuse me, I'm going to cough. <clears throat> first thing that we're going to talk about is the history. So we've had statewide databases now for 20 years, going on 20 years. It started in 1999 as the Database Demonstration Project. Um, there was, in the 69th legislative session, there was Senate Bill 482. Which is a huge, huge piece of legislation about um, Nevada schools. You can go the bottom link there. You can actually read the bill if you want. It's gigantic. Um, it addresses, as I said, Nevada the Nevada education system. But the how the state library came into it was this little thing called um, in in SB 482 they needed to create a commission on educational technology and remember this was 20 years ago so technology was not what it is now if you can remember that far back not everyone had computers everything was pretty much dial up unless you had um, <clears throat> tons of money or lived in a big city um, books were books they were hard in your hand paper um, technology, especially educational technology, wasn't as, as far reaching as it was now. So the Senate bill um, wanted educational technology to, to be used to improve student achievement. And the question was how to do that. And this is a story told to me by Jeff Kintop, our recently retired state librarian and former state archivist. He said uh, the solution that they came up with was libraries, right? school libraries and public libraries. How do we help students achieve with technology when we're still not even sure what that technology is? We go to the libraries. Um, the state library came into it because, you know, we, we have contacts with all of you. We have contacts with school and public and academic librarians. So that is how we came to have statewide databases. We got $385,000 in our budget that year to buy educational databases that would go in K-12 and public libraries. 
um, students could use this technology, access these materials in their school libraries, and when they weren't at school, they could access them in their public libraries. Because we have public libraries everywhere, right? They're in you know the little tiny communities all throughout the state. We have pretty good market penetration. So that's how that happened. And um, I wasn't around for this, but apparently it was very successful because they kept renewing this year after year with assembly bills, Senate bills. Um, they just kept the Senate, the legislature, I should say, kept authorizing money to purchase technology for e educational technology, I should say. Um, right about 2012, so 12, 13 years later, they actually added this as a real line item in our budget. So we didn't have to keep getting it authorized every year. It was actually just, well, we had to keep getting it approved. We had to get funded, but we didn't have to have a new Senate bill or assembly bill giving us money to buy databases. Um, and since then, um, now here we are 20 years later. Currently, we have from the state about $210,000 to buy databases each year. That numbers, you know, varied between uh, that and about the high of $500,000 per year. Um, it must be approved by the legislature every year. Last year we got some one-shot money, but that's not permanent. That has to be re-approved. Um, in our next cycle of budget, we, we've asked for the same amount. I think we've asked for more, but it still needs to be approved. So keep that in mind. And um, also, um, the State Library considers educational technology resources super important, so we've used LSTA money to supplement what we're able to buy with just state money. Okay, so um, that's a brief history of statewide databases and defending sources. Does anyone have more questions about that? Nope, all righty. So next thing is, okay, so we have these statewide databases. What are they, right, and what's in them? Currently we have four. With um, the funding that we have available and with our purchasing power as a state, we were able to buy four. Um, ABC Clio, which is, we have licenses for K-12 public and academic libraries, we have the student edition of ABC Clio, and it's for aimed at grades 8 through 12. Um, we have EBSCO, which is a comprehensive database, um, also available for K-12 public and academic libraries. Um, the target audience there, it goes from elementary to college to adult. Learning Express Library, which is test prep, test preparation, skills building. Um, so any kind of test at all, pretty much, Learning Express will have. If you want to take your real estate test, they'll have practice tests. Um, the ASVAB test, you know, you never have that book because it's always stolen or missing or lost or out of date. You can um, guide people to Learning Express Library to take that test there. Um, and it also does skills building. If you need help on Excel or any kind of computer skills, it's in Learning Express. And um, our last database is WorldBook. And our license is only for K-12 and public libraries, not academics, um, because this is this is pretty much um, for for students. Um, Worldbook, we have one database that's just for pre-K for toddlers, and then um, the regular encyclopedia actually has adult level content. So these are our databases, and right. So what is actually in the databases? So I know I sent out a LibGuide link a few. Um, months ago. I've sort of tweaked it, moved it around, put new information in there, and I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to switch screens. Okay. All right, here's the LibGuide. Um, there's general information. You can see all the little sections there. Training contacts, the webinar. So the webinar today, the link is right here, um, right there, sorry. And I will put the archived link right here. Next month, we're having a World Book training webinar, and you can sign up at that link right there. That is going to be run by the World Book people. Um, 
We have vendor training, promotional items, I'll go over all of that later, but what is in the database is the content. If you click on ABC Clio, here's a list of all of our ABC Clio history databases. Um, and if you click on those, you'll get a pop-up, which will give an overview of exactly what this database is for, um, who the target audience is, right? The features, <clears throat> topic centers, so you know it's, it's from 1350 to 2001, it's uh, pretty comprehensive. And um, yeah, so ABC Clio will do that. If you click on Learning Express and you wanna know what's in Career Prep, another pop-up, and we'll get career prep and overview. So allied health, that's sort of um, nursing, caseworkers, culinary arts. Um, those are overviews. It has entrance exams, occupational exams, job search and workplace skills, um, work keys assessments, and this TOEIC. So each of these links will take you to that Learning Express Center and tell you what's in it. Um, same with World Book. We'll click on World Book Kids. <clears throat> Tells you it's a you know a variety of simple search and browse navigation options, but it'll give you screenshots of the user interface. You can see World Book Kids. This is this is for kids, right? This is is pretty user friendly. Lots of graphics, lots of icons. Very good for that level. Um, and there's a little help button down there. So um, that's World Book. And then the last one, EBSCO. These are our 18 EBSCO databases. Academic Search Main, all the way to Moss Complete, and it tells you the general target audience for each of them. Um, if you click on them, again, you'll get a pop-up. Request pricing, you ignore that. But um, down here, title lists, journals, subject, and other. If you click on those, It'll tell you more probably than you want to know, but it'll give you every single publication that is contained in this database and the start date and the stop date. Um, so if you're looking for a specific um, journal, you know, this is kind of a huge list, but you could find it. If you're looking for a specific journal, you could also contact EBSCO and ask them if they have it and where it is, and that would be quicker. But um, anyway, this is exactly what's in it. And, sorry, we'll go back. Um, it gives you at a glance. Um, subjects include biology, chemistry, engineering, physics, right? It's an essential resource for the college researcher. So that's sort of what an overview. I am creating cheat sheets for all of these. I'm working with the vendors to create little, like, printable little um, four by eight cheat sheets that you can just stick up on the wall and um, it will give you like a quick and dirty look at what's in them. Okay, so that's the LibGuide for, um, well, that's that's the, um, what am I saying? Hold on, let me go back. I forgot this. Right here, this is a printable. It's everything that's on the LibGuide, but it's just a list right if that helps okay and as i said we'll we'll be preparing more of these little printable cheat sheets and they will be posted somewhere on the libguide either under that that vendor or in the general information section okay so any any comments about the how do we know what's in the databases portion Okay. Oh, there we go. Here's a whole slide just devoted to the link to the LibGuide, but we already went over that. Microsoft PowerPoint has stopped working. Do you see that link? Hmm. 
My PowerPoint just crashed. What? Educational technology. Okay. Okay, we're back. Um, thank you for your patience. Okay, so now we are into the um, the contract part of it. So if you were around last fall, I sent a survey out because we needed to do a request for a proposal for our statewide databases. And um, most, about 170 people responded, and the overwhelming feeling I got was that you were very happy with ABC Clio, Learning Express, and Worldbook. So we kept them for our final year. We were allowed to renew them one more time, so we kept them. You were also pretty happy with EBSCO, but there were also comments that, you know, you loved Gail. You know, you loved these other vendors. So um, based on that, we went out for bid. And we, we did a bid for comprehensive databases. Um, and we got EBSCO again. So, so that, that's a good thing. You already know EBSCO. We did, however, get some new titles. Some of the older titles, I mean, some of the older databases, or maybe not older but databases, we got rid of some of the data databases and replaced them with different ones. So we still have the same number, but they're just not exactly the same. So if you have links to EBSCO, make sure that all the links that you have are our current contract and that you have all of the new links posted. And I sent those out, but I will send them again. Um, just let me know. Okay. So the fact that we have three databases expiring in June means that we'll need to do another bid. We'll need to do another RFP. EBSCO we have for another year, and we have two options to renew for one more year. So, you know, we might be able to have EBSCO until 2022, but we definitely cannot keep ABC Clear Learn and Express a World Book due to state purchasing requirements. Um, the way that we get these databases is we create a scope of work where we say this is exactly what we want. You know, do we want test prep? If we want something like Learning Express, then we do a scope of work that says we want test prep and skills building databases. And we get vendors who can meet that scope of work. <clears throat> we have a committee then that evaluates the bids based on competence, experience, conformance with RFP, expertise, and cost. The conformance with RFP is, is important because if we say we want skills building databases and someone gives us a magazine ebook sort of database, that does not conform at all with our RFP, um, right? So they would score low in that category. Then um, the, the committee makes a recommendation and based on that recommendation, um, we do some back and forth, seeing how much money we have and how much we can actually get for our available funds. Then uh, we award a contract and the Board of Examiners approves it. And if you recall back to a few months ago um, with EBSCO, we had a little like lapse because the Board of Examiners didn't approve the contract until August but the databases started in July, so we still had access to them, but I was very hesitant to send out links and everything just because um, it hadn't been officially approved. Um, anyway, and then these contracts, as I said, can be renewed twice for one year for a total of four years. What this means, again, is that we will be doing new RFPs for our statewide databases, and I don't want to make all these decisions internally, so we need you to either volunteer to be on the database committee or recruit one of your staff to be on the database committee. Um, this will sort of be, um, the ones that are expiring are for the K-12 audience mostly, and they're paid for with the state money, because remember that Senate bill that said we had we should provide um, 
educational resources for K-12. Well, this the, the contracts that are expiring are for the K-12 market. So um, that doesn't mean the rest of the state can't participate, but they're, they're specifically like K-12 resources. Um, so anyway, we'll need representatives on this committee from public K-12 and academics and from small and large libraries. Right? I want the whole state to be represented. And um, rural, north, south, and east. Um, so if we don't have enough people from rural libraries, I might come and give you a phone call or shoot you an email asking you to be on the committee. Um, if I have too many people from the south, um, I, I will thank you for your offer, but maybe we'll try and, and spread the love throughout the state. Right, so um, if you would like to participate in, in figuring out what our next set of databases is going to look like, definitely um, volunteer or recruit someone to, to serve on this committee. It's going to be November, December because we have to get the RFP out in January, so we don't go to the Board of Examiners in August like we did this year, so we have to start the whole process earlier, which would be January. Um, I imagine that we'll be conducting some surveys and, and then we'll be writing a scope of work to determine what we want. And then um, I might also recruit you to be on the evaluation committee. Officially, I'm not supposed to have more than three people. That's what this, the state purchasing would like, no more than like three, three to five. But well, we did seven last time, so. Um, seven people on the evaluation committee. Any comments or questions about that? Any volunteers? I've had one volunteer so far, but we'll need more. Okay, think about it. That's important. It's important. It'll make your voice heard. Okay. Okay, next up is access and user interfaces. So again, this, this might be something you're familiar with. Um, you know, access, you just stick a link up there. But uh, we also have these things called you know, profiles or interfaces, and they sort of bundle, bundle the different database titles together and, and, um, and put them in one user interface. Um, and that might be a good idea if you have you know, databases that are specifically for little kids and you have a little kids page on your website, you could put those database links there with some images and graphics. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what's standard, what's customizable, and what's best for your target audience. Okay. So the first thing, you know, this is Learning Express. If you have a link to Learning Express, it comes up with this page um, that gives you all eight uh, titles that we we subscribe to and you can search all of them at once. You can also link to each individual one. You can link to the career prep. You can put this the, the Spanish language one um, on a different page. But there's one portal that is totally searchable. Worldbook is not like that. There's one portal, but you have to search each of them individually. There, there's not a universal search for World Book. So if you just have a link for World Book, um, it it might not help your users figure out which one to use. Um, just you know, just think about that. Um, next is ABC Clio. So ABC Clio, there's like this universal portal right it's got all of the titles you can search all of them you can search two of them you can search um, like the American government and American history and world at war all at the same time or you can link to each individual database right here's what American history looks like okay you probably know all this already but um, just a visual sometimes helps EBSCO though EBSCO is a little more complicated, and maybe complicated is not the right word. It's more customizable, and, and because there are so many options, and it sort of becomes more complicated. We have 18 EBSCO titles, and uh, as you may have remembered, uh, 
the titles don't exactly tell you what's in them. Master file doesn't really explain what's in them. Um, so EBSCO, EBSCO, you can have individual database links, but you can also bundle them. And there are two interfaces called EBSCO host and Explora. And I never knew what Explora was until last week, so um, that's my bad. But Explora takes those and they bundle them together so that you can search multiple databases through one interface. That's also what EBSCO host does. It just it looks different. Explora is designed to be a little more, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Like Google-ish, um, big, big images, icons enter any word you want, whereas EBSCO is, is uh, you know, more like Boolean searching, advanced searching. Um, but with either of those, you can bundle titles. Um, we have three different health databases through EBSCO. So you could bundle all of those health databases into a health explorer and put it on a web page that's devoted to health resources for your community. And it will, it will have one interface, one search box, but it will search the three different health databases. So it kind of helps your users. And it also, I think, helps your staff. If someone comes up to me and says, oh my gosh, I need, I need information on, on the Spanish flu, um, I really honestly wouldn't know which database to look at. But if they're all bundled together, you can just like say, I would just say, hey, look at this this particular health one. It would search all of them. So every single thing that EBSCO has in terms of interfaces for searching is editable and customizable. You can, um, you know, you may not be able to make, you, you can't actually change the structure, but you can change what you want to appear um, and what you want it to search. And I cannot help you fix that, but EBSCO Heck Tech, EBSCO Tech can help you um, bundle and customize your your EBSCO interfaces. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was amazed when I found that out. Okay. All right, so they're customizable. So uh, any questions or comments about the whole interface thing and the links, the different links, and what can be, which, which databases offer sort of bulk searches, not bulk, bundled searches like ABC, Clio, and EBSCO, and which don't? Okay. Okay, thank you. Next up. Okay, usage statistics. So... Usage, I don't want to say usage is horrible. Usage is, is interesting. Um, some, some places and some databases um, have very, very high usage. Uh, it's hard to compare because each vendor sort of has different, um, you've probably heard this before, but the, the search, it's not comparing apples to apples. Everyone kind of has different ideas of what a search is. So ABC Clio searches may not necessarily be exactly what um, World Book searches are. So it's hard to judge. But, you know, what I can see is who is using it and who isn't. Um, and I think the people who are using it, excellent, thank you. Um, we appreciate it because this is, again, a, a source that needs to be, whose funding needs to be reauthorized every year. Um, if you don't have much usage, I suspect it's because, um, you know, your staff and your, your users don't really know it's there. It's very easy to forget about the databases because they're, they're not visible. They're not things. They're these cloud resources that, um, you know, do you have a book on this? Well, no, we don't. Do you have a book on um, SATs? Well, no, sorry, we don't. It, it's missing. But you do have Learning Express, and, and it just takes a little. Um, yeah, anyway, it, it would be good to, to make these resources findable for everybody, users and staff, so that we can have usage statistics, perhaps maybe not a, a um, meh face, a happy face. 
um, one thing, just random checking of your links on your portals, some of them don't work. So if you wanted to go in and look at your links and make sure they worked, that would probably help with usage statistics. Um, promotional items, curriculum guides, all of those are available on the LibGuide. Um, that maybe would help everyone remember that we have these. Uh, we have bookmarks, printable bookmarks, and I'm thinking that we uh, we will we will get some bookmarks printed and distribute them if you thought that might help with usage. Um, let me know. Okay. And if you want your stats, a lot of you do get your stats. Um, a lot of you know how to use go into um, admin and download yours. If you don't, the vendor reps can help you or you can ask me on the LibGuide. There's a place where you can request database usage stats. Ask me and I'll send them to you. I will go in and I will pull all your stats from each of the four databases and I will send them directly to you. Um, if you are like a branch or a school, I might not have that detail because some of the uh, databases are only at like the, the system level. So we'd have it for your school district, not your school. We'd have it for your library system, not your branch. But um, if we have it, I will find it and I will send it. And then you can at least see, you can see what's happening. Um, any comments or questions about statistics? Yeah. Okay. Oh yes, I thought I would go over this. Um, <clears throat> Last winter, it's that survey that I had mentioned earlier, um, I asked a question, how can we help you learn more about the databases? How can we help you help your users? Um, and these are the results. Um, webinars were good. Uh, quite a few of the comments went in smaller, little itty bitty, like five minute webinars. And I want you to know that those are totally, completely doable. The vendors will do, you know, screencasts and they will do mini sessions and help you whenever, I shouldn't say whenever, but pretty much whenever you're available, they, they will do these little virtual webinars with you. Um, in person was pretty low overall. In person is hard, right? Printable tutorials, so I'm working on those, those cheat sheets. Um, I'm, I'm working on those. Bookmarks, again, um, let me know. I think we're going to print some bookmarks for you. And uh, other handouts, uh, other, other, gosh, there are all sorts of things in other I can't really remember. But so this is, this is what you suggested would help you as library staff remember the, the, databases and um, get training on them. And that's sort of what the staff support LibGuide is meant to be. It's supposed to be a place where you will be able to go and get all your promotional items, find all your vendor contacts, um, request usage stats, and get cheat sheets. Okay. Okay, we're winding up here. Um, the LibGuide has links for each vendor's printable promotional things. Um, that right there is the box wrapper. It's the, it, the, it's the link that goes directly to the box, but it's also on the LibGuide. How to get help training. Okay, one good thing about consolidation, um, EBSCO bought Learning Express and they manage ABC Clio. So there's one contact for just general help and training for ABC Clio. And her name is Janine Gieske. Gieske. She's um, our Nevada rep. Um, whatever you need, if she can't get it for you, she knows exactly who can. So any anything at all with ABC Clio, Learning Express, or EBSCO, Janine. Rob Geertsen is our World Book Rep for Nevada. He's the rep. We also have a trainer. But um, just whatever kind of help you need, contact Rob and he will make sure that it gets to the right person. Okay? 
and uh, the contact info is on the LibGuide. If you can't remember this, just email me and I will get it to the right person. It's, 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 yes, email, email me. Um, technical help. Again, ABC Clio Learning Express and EBSCO have the same number. So that's really easy. Uh, any kind of techie help, uh, IP addresses, uh, if you want to bundle your Explorers so you can have like all your health information together, all your um, teacher education stuff together, technical help is good. But also, also um, the training help is also good because they can tell you if you need technical help or not. Um, Worldbook, there's their 800 number. Again, if you don't remember that, call me. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, this is the second to the last slide. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, if, if you have any takeaways from this little intro to statewide databases, um, this is what I would like you to remember. They have been part of your collection for the past 20 years. We've been, we've been offering statewide databases for the last 20 years. I hope we continue to offer statewide databases for the, you know, distant future um, they're important um, but also remember allocations must be reapproved every year so if you ever talk to your legislators thank them for reapproving LSTA and thank them for authorizing statewide databases in our budget it's a good thing um, promotional materials are available training is available Okay, it is. We have tons and tons and tons of training in our contract, um, and we, we don't use all of it. The vendors are always roaming in and out of Nevada, offering to meet with you in person or on the phone or do a quick webinar. So we have tons of training. And then finally, we need to figure out what's going to come up for the next year, what we're going to do with databases for the next year. So. Um, Round up some people to be on the committee and let me know, and then we'll do a new scope of work and um, see what happens next year. Okay. And then let's see. I have one question for database committee. Do you prefer behind the scenes skilled workers on the committee or unskilled so we can see how easy to use? So for the actual committee, this is going to be determining um, what we need for Nevada. And um, we're going to like write the scope of work. So do we need history databases? Do we need um, test prep? Do we need an encyclopedia? So, so someone with some subject matter expertise. Um, but I don't know, unskilled, how easy to use. Anyone have any thoughts on that? My thought on 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 how easy they are to use because we won't be actually judging the databases. We will just be figuring out what kind we want. So yeah, that's what I want. Behind the skill behind the scenes skilled workers. Okay. Okay, so anyway, back to the final. Um there's the link for the LibGuide, databases library staff. Um, survey, as I said, we, we try to do surveys for our library staff training. In it, you can put any comments about additional things you'd want for databases, like printables, like more training, um, like whatever you, you want. So please do that. And then that's me. That's my contact info. And that was 40 minutes. We're done. Okay. Any comments? Want to say anything? Anyone want to say anything? Okay, you are free to go. Thank you. Okay, bye.